Well, I wasn't going to um, do anything more with this setup, um, but I ran into something, and it's something that could cause people a lot of frustration. And it's noise, and I guess it's static. And those are sometimes very hard to pin down. And when I first put this together and started trying to use it, one of the things I discovered right away was that this thing would hum a lot. Because I would test this on um, a turn or on a on my realistic amplifier, which by the way doesn't like this because this has a, the cartridge in this is not EQ'd uh, in a way that that amplifier likes. It, the highs on this are just too high. You wind up turning your treble all the way down, and uh, it just doesn't work well. But the other thing I ran into was a lot of hum. So, trying to figure out what was going on. Actually, let me flip this back up. So the first thing I did, and it did help actually, was um, let me just uh, turn this around. Let me avoid taking this over. Something I want to show, point out. Um, uh, let's see, let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay, now if I can get focused on the right thing. There's a little piece of uh, circuit board material here that these two R RCA jacks are mounted on. And that isolates them from this. Which means that um, this is not really grounded to anything, it's just, it's just there. So the first thing I tried, did I throw that away? Yeah. Oh, here it is. Got it out. First thing I tried was I took this, I soldered it to the ground, and then I just unscrewed the screw and stuck it underneath there, and basically grounded this to this. And that reduced the hum somewhat. But I still had, it was, it's, it was a little bit of hum, and it was kind of a, a staticky noise. Um, the only way I could, it it um, it was just to, just enough to be annoying. So I said, "Well, that's not working." So the next thing I did was I decided to check because you know one of the key parts to dealing with um, hum is shielding, and one of the problem areas. Uh, let's sit back out here. One of the problem areas is the the metal in this arm. Now, while I had the uh, cartridge grounded to the car ground from the cartridge grounded to the chassis, I could handle this and I wouldn't cause any hum. Some some tone arms, when you grab them, you can actually hear a hum caused by you grabbing it, which tells you that the arm is not properly grounded, most likely. Either there's a, some corrosion or it just was never really grounded. So I was looking at this and say, well, what do I do with this? How do I get this to, or, or actually my first question was, is there a problem between this and this? So I went right to the heart of the matter. There's a screw right here that screws into this arm. And you can't see that, can you? Let's try aiming to the right spot. All right. So this screw screws right into this metal arm, and it is metal. And so I measured from here, and I had this flipped up. I measured from here back to the uh, chassis underneath. That was the handiest place. And I checked down here. And between here and here, Actually, well, about 130 ohms, I think, between here and the chassis. That's well, it definitely means it's not grounded, but why doesn't it hum when I grab it? The only thing I can think of is that there was just enough, or the resistance was just low enough that me handling the tone arm, because this was grounded to the chassis, the, the, the resistance was low enough that it was keeping the hum at bay, hum at bay somewhat. So, and that kind of headed me off in the wrong direction because I thought, well, what's going on? So my next thing was, well, what about this? Um, 
this little amplifier, you know, a very good chance that it's humming or doing something. You know, maybe I got a flaky tube. You know, I, I've moved the tubes, checked, and I, these these were um, pretty dirty. Well, all three of those, and so, and I did clean them. I, I used the oxid on those, and I wiggled them around, moved them in and out, and just got them to the point where I could wiggle them and they made no noise. So I said, well, I haven't tested the tubes. Maybe that's it. But I wasn't quite ready to go to that spot just yet. So I thought about it and I thought about it. So then I hooked up another turntable. And unfortunately, this doesn't have enough oomph to handle a uh, modern turntable with magnetic cartridge, I think is what's in it. So I hooked a preamp up to it and hooked it into this. No noise. So I was pretty confident that my problem was not here. Um, and the other thing that made me pretty confident that I didn't have a problem, the problem was not here, was that when I hooked this up to something else, it would hum. Although I hooked, this is my little PA amp, I hooked it up to that, it was perfectly fine. So I don't know why that was happy and didn't hum, and this and my other stereo uh, uh, did. I, I don't, still don't know why that it was. So I'm pondering this, and I'm pondering this. And I said, well, I know there's resistance here, and what if? And so I'm looking at this, and I'm trying to figure out, well, I could run a wire to this point, uh, and you can't see me again. I have to really pay attention to my, this. Now, there is a screw right here that I could go to, but it's right behind the spring, and I got this adjusted just where I want it. So I looked up here and said, oh, another, oh. So I said, well... I've got the screw and I can feed the wire down through here. So what I did was, I, I got my wire fed, and you got to be careful with that by the way. I tried an, another piece of wire and the uh, insulation on it was too stiff, and my tone arm would just sit just like this. It would just sit there. I said, oh goody, that wire is more like a spring than a wire. So I finally found a piece of wire that was um, uh, soft enough that was compliant that was compliant enough that wouldn't cause me a problem. So then the next thing I did was I removed and back out. I removed the ground from from between here and here. Or from between here and here. I got rid of that. I ran this wire and I hooked it, soldered it into one of the ground logs. These two these two grounds are actually tied together. I don't know if it's in the, the uh, cartridge or where it is, but these two are tied together. And actually, they're tied together at my amplifier. So one way or another, these two were tied together. So I just hooked this up to one side. Uh, and so now, this chassis is not actually grounded to anything. Which is kind of interesting, because I've got this little brown wire right here, uh, which was part of the original setup, and this ground wire does go to uh, this little wire right here. There's a wire that goes to the chassis, and it is grounded. Um, and this little wire right here is a ground wire that actually is connected to that, and it was run over to the Morse radio that I had, which is what gave me the idea to ground this in the first place. I thought, well, if I ground this to this, it's going to be the same thing as running this over there to the chassis of the radio. Which is basically what it would have been. And of course I explained how that didn't fix it. Now, running this wire, which is, this is the wire that went all the way up to my, my tone arm, helped a little bit. It didn't fix the problem. So now what? Okay, well, once again I'm pondering this. And, you know, part of me is saying, well, you know, this, um, this amp probably worked fine in whatever it was in. If it hadn't, they would have done something. But if then, back then, back then, this is what they had for connections to their stereo equipment. 
And I actually thought about spinning around, but this is a transformer powered amp. So flipping this one way or the other is probably not going to make any difference. So I didn't bother trying that. So I'm thinking about it and thinking about it. I said, there's got to be a reason why this is humming. I don't know what it is. So the next thing I did was I checked because these, these, uh, um, these right here, this thing's been floating around. Uh, if you saw my previous video, video on this little amp, you'll know that this thing was bouncing around in the box full of goodies. And um, these wires have been stressed. So the first thing I did was check between here and here and here and here to make sure that even though it looks like the wire is there, I want to make sure that this ground wire was indeed making a good connection. And it seems it turns out it was. And um oh my tubes again. I gotta put this in a box or something. So once again I'm pondering. I'm pretty sure there's nothing wrong with this amp. Because like I said, if I hook this up to um if I hook this up to a um a preamp and then drive uh, and hook up another turntable to this, I don't have this problem. Why? I'm not exactly sure. Well, other than the fact that the, the modern turntable, whatever they did, it doesn't cause problems with anything I hook it up to. Um, so, here's what I finally came up with. I don't know if that's going to eject on me or not, so we're going to is it back out here for a minute? Up here is a piece of test equipment, and you can't see it. Yeah, all right, all right. Up here is a piece of test equipment, and these these are grounds. And I think you can hear that. Now this is actually not as bad as what it was doing was because there's also some uh, static key noise in there. But I hope you can hear this. It's gone. It's dead quiet. I mean I got this I think that thing this is maxed out right now. And there's the teeniest tiny bit of hum. And um zero static. And when it was staticking, the minute I did this, I grounded the chassis. The static went away. So apparently, and I have no idea how this was mounted and if it was in some way grounded somewhere. I just, I'm not, I can't find any information on this. And I, given the way they did things back then, I highly doubt they were relying on more than the ground that was coming in through uh, these two. And by the way, these grounds are grounded to the chassis. So, what I'm going to do, what I have to do apparently, is I'm going to put a three-wire power cord on this. And that's going to solve my humming and staticking and everything. Because the minute I did this, it, I, I, I wish I could recreate the static noise. But it's not there. Oh yeah, there it is. Kind of. Well, the hum. Yeah. yeah, I wish I could hear it. Well, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is the static and the hum both go away when I ground this chassis. Um, and maybe the problem is that today we have so many noisemakers on our AC line that maybe this amplifier is just picking up the noise that is on our our 120 volt lines here in the U.S. Um, and that's something I just happened to think of because well let me back up because my first thought was this probably worked just fine when they built it and put it in that console. Why is it not working fine now? Um, 
And there's some other thoughts that I had because there's a across the line capacitor. It's a disc capacitor, but there's a it's a, an older capacitor. So I thought, well, maybe the, the across the line capacitor um, isn't any good. Possible, I suppose. And I am going to change it. Um, I hadn't gotten around to that. But I am going to change that before I do so anything else. I also want to put a fuse in this. I didn't do that yet either. Because I've just been too. I've been having too much fun playing with this and listening to it. Oh, by the way, if you can get your hands on like these little Yamaha surround sound speakers, or the bigger brothers that go with them, they sound really nice through this thing, or with this thing. It, it's amazing. Of course, the smaller ones don't have quite the bottom end, but they are surprising. Um, this thing sounds really good through either these or their bigger brothers. Um, but these are the ones that were giving me the clearest indication of what the noise uh, of the noise. Um, as I hook this up to the bigger speakers, I didn't hear the static as much, but I did hear the hum. I probably heard it more because the had bigger bottom end speakers. Um, so anyway, I digress. So the fix is going to be grounding the chassis. And I actually thought about putting a metal plate under this to try to act as an additional shield for this. And whether that would help or not, I don't know. Listen, do I have anything? No. Well, this is painted, so it's probably not going to make any difference whatsoever. Just for the fun of it, though. Um, well, let's put that over because that's not going to work. I just can't sit flat on it. I highly doubt this will make any difference whatsoever. But we're playing. We're playing around. Oh, oh, you didn't see what I just did. Darn. Okay. All right. This is a metal plate. This actually goes to my desk. It's a divider for this office desk that I use for a workbench. So what I've done is I put this metal plate underneath the amplifier. So let's see. Let's see if that makes any difference at all. My guess, I doubt it. But you never know. With shielding, it might make a difference. Oh, there it is. Hmm. Really? Let's check that out. Okay, right about there, I have my control, right about there, I'm not going to move it, let's see what happens when I put this plate back under there. That's the solution. Um, all I did was hook up this ground wire, hooked it up to my the ground on my test equipment, and no more hum. So, um, grounding, putting the ground to this made a difference. It wasn't the whole answer, but it helped. Um, and when you're doing stuff like this, make sure, because the other thing I ran into with this was um, this had broken ground at one point too, so I had to solder that back together. Not sure what I'm going to, I may have to, yeah that looks like fun. Uh, they did it, I guess I should be able. Um, I probably need to do something so that this isn't being pulled quite so tight. 
so that wire is going to break again, I'm sure. But make sure all of your grounds on both sides are healthy, on both ends as well. Because uh, if you don't, you might be chasing a hum that just because um, of the uh, of a poor ground. Now, the other thing that you want to check for is if you turn if you turn your amp all the way down and you're still getting a hum and you haven't done any restoration work on it, um, there's a good chance that you have a bad electrolytic capacitor. Um, and somebody was talking about the difference between 60 hum, 60 psycho hum, and a uh, uh, 120 psycho hum. And I'm forgetting what the cause of the 120 psycho hum is. Um, but if you're not hearing a 60 cycle hum with the volume all the way down, then there's a very good chance that your electrolytic capacitor is just fine. Or at least it's not the source of your hum. It may, it may uh, sometime in the near future, if it's old, um, short out and take things, take things out that you don't want it to take out. Which is why I usually don't run things with an old electrolytic. I don't trust them. So anyway, so... Um, it looks like this is a quick fix to a noisy amp. Um, this isn't high powered, it's about 11 watts per channel, uh, for those of you who hadn't seen, haven't seen the previous video. Um, but, and it can get pretty loud and definitely can do some humming. Now you notice I've got this all the way back, back up to where it was, and my hum is just faintly visible. And right at this point, it's going to be a bit loud, so you're probably going to be running your amp more down here. And at that level, you don't even hear anything. So, I'm going to, to bail out at this point, and um, hope that this helps somebody, because um, I was definitely scratching my head on this one. I was checking everything. Oh, the other thing that I, I mentioned in the previous video on, the, on this little amp, this little cover here is not just decorative. Um... This acts as a shield, uh, unless it's a coincidence. Uh, I I thought I really thought I had a noisy tube in this thing, and while it was playing, I decided to bravely put this on here because I, I was I was listening to something, and um, so I thought, well, I think I can do it, put that on there without doing any bad things, because most of the connections are running down the middle of this. I thought, all right, sure, why not? The minute I put this cover on here, I noticed a huge reduction in the noise. I was shocked. In fact, I added that as an as a additional segment in my, my previous video because I was so surprised at how, how much this did to shield uh, these controls and, and keep the noise level down, which no doubt is why they have this cover, because they discovered... Well, probably because they're engineers, and they say, yeah, well, this shielding is necessary, or we're going to have noise. And they were right. But, like I said, that, that didn't solve the problem for me. Um, now, I am still a little bit puzzled as to why that staticky noise that I was hearing, and it, that was the thing that was bugging me and actually pushed me to check this out further was the staticking noise. And of course, now that I'm trying to show it to you, it isn't happening. And maybe there's something in the house that was causing the noise and it stopped. I don't know. But there's also the hum. And so um, oh, and yes, the other thing is um, when you use more modern speakers with these vintage champs, now this one has a fair amount of power, so it's less affected. But if you hook this up to vintage speakers, this thing has a lot more volume than it gets with those. Uh, but even with the even with these modern speakers, it puts out a lot of volume. But you have to push it higher, and it gets you up in, uh, into the range where hum becomes more noticeable. Um, if you ha like, if I had some decent vintage speakers I could run this on, I'd have more volume. I'd probably have even less hum because I could run it at a lower volume and get more sound sound out of this thing. But, 
ground it and that becomes far less of an issue. And uh, when you're listening to uh, music, uh, that little tiny bit of hum that's left, um, I don't think you're even going to notice it. So that's going to be the next thing. I did want to do some other things to this, so now I know there's one more thing I want to do. Three-wire cord. I don't automatically do that with uh, transformer-based devices, but in this case, I guess it's going to solve an irritating problem. And uh, I interrupt this regularly broadcast program to make this important announcement. I was wrong, what I said earlier. I th really thought that it wouldn't matter on a transformer type device, transformer power device, which way you plug that power cord in. And I also thought that installing a cord with a three-prong outlet would solve the problem. I know this because I did it and it didn't solve it. And what was more interesting was, well, I've been spending some time playing with this, trying to figure out what on earth is going on. So let me show you, and I'm hoping you can hear this. I may take the camera off the stand and move it closer uh, to the, uh, the speaker. Or actually, I think what I'll do is move the speaker closer to the camera. That would be easier. So let me get my meter out of the way so we can move that speaker and hopefully do that without shorting anything out. I hope. Maybe. Let's see, can we? I'm getting this, I should have done this before and I didn't think of it. And it's the story of my life. All right, now, right now, I have this plug plugged in one way and it's, the, it's in the position, it so happens, that um, gives me the least amount of home. And there is, not, my ground wire, I can hear you, my ground wire isn't connected to anything. This is not grounded separately to anything. Now watch this. Now, you can hear that effect. Let me do it again the other way. So I hope you can hear that. Now, there it is. Nothing. Or hardly nothing. And there's a little bit, but there's not anything near what it, it is that way. So I puzzled over this a bit. I had trouble getting to sleep because my mind was pondering this issue last night. Uh, sleep is overrated, I swear. But anyway, let me uh, show you this. And I can't tell. Oh, there it is. All right. So this is the way this is wired up. Now I'm used to seeing either a capacitor across the power line or from here down to the chassis ground. This has both. And in a moment we're going to find out which orientation of this power line, a power cord, is positioned where. I don't know if that will help me understand what's going on, because I'd like to. But, um, so the question is, is the hot line here when it's not humming, or is it here? And you might say, well, why would that matter? Well, that's my question. Why would it matter? Um, and look at this setup right here. You've got this capacitor across and this one going to ground. Great. Again, not sure why that would matter. But here's something interesting that you should note. This spot here has less capacitance than this spot here. Now, some of you are going to say you're nuts because you've got two capacitors between here and here. And you've got one capacitor between here and here. You've got to know how capacitors work. They're not like resistors. You put two resistors in series, you get more resistance. But two, more, two capacitors in series, you get less capacitance. In fact, uh, these are 0.01s. And so if I were to measure from here to here, I'd, I'd measure 0.01. But if I were to measure from here to, from here to here, I would get half the capacitance, not 0.01. So if my hotline is here, there's less capacitance between here and here than if my hotline were here. So the question I now have is, which way is it? We're going to find out in just a second. I'm just trying to figure this out. I don't know why this would be and why, I just don't know why it would hum. And that sounds like a 60 cycle hum to me. 
almost as though there were bad electrolytic in there, but I know they aren't bad because I just put brand new ones in there. Um, and as you can see, it's quiet. So that can't be the issue. So I marked this cord. And let's see, I have, there's my mark. So it was in there. So this is, this is the hot side right here. So let's find out. I get my meter out of the tangle that I put it into. Come on, you. I gotta set you free. Come on, come on, come on. All right. So I'm going to find out which wire. I didn't think the check was beforehand. It would have been nice to do that, wouldn't it? All right. Oh, I think I did, and I don't remember, but I think. Yep. Oh. Um, so this, interesting, okay, so that's correct, all right, so it looks like the neutral is the red wire, I should have selected the black wire as my, well, no, because black is, I, I have the right color cords, I've got a white one right here, I should have done that, I didn't. So now I have to remember which one I did. All right, so it's not humming. And, okay, so this is the neutral side. And I put this back in just to make sure I'm not losing my mind. And it's humming. You can already hear it. All right, so this is how that goes. This is the neutral. And the neutral is this one. If you go here, all right. So, the hot lead goes over here, which means that the hot lead is indeed here. So, what's causing this problem? I'm not exactly sure, and because here's what makes it even more interesting. And if somebody can help me explain, uh, understand this, it would be really nice. Um, these replacement capacitors I put in here are the second set I put in here because I wasn't I had trouble finding my 0.01s. That's what these are. This is an X, this is a Y. All right, if I'm right, X, ca X caps want to go like this, Y wants to go across that. Um, I thought the only thing I had were these 0.1s, and these are Y2 X1s. So I guess they can go in either spot. So a 0.1 is 10 times larger than a 0.01. Basic math. So what that means is that when I had the other capacitors in here, even when the hot lead was over here, it had the same, at least as much capacitance as it does now being here going through this capacitor. In fact, it had more capacitance because, like I said, those were ten times the size of these guys. So even cutting those, even reducing those by half, they would still, there still would have been a lot more capacitance between this point and this point than there is right now. The other thought that ran through my mind is, if you're, you know, if you think about how um, crossovers work, you select the capacitance based on the frequency that you're trying to filter out. So the question that runs through my mind is, does this mean that the .01s work better in this application? Maybe. What's happening right now is that I don't need a ground on my on my chassis. Um, in fact, I almost think I didn't have that problem even before I changed these. So there's, there's too many moving pieces to this, and it's got me rather confused in some ways. But what I've done now is, and what I'm going to do, is I'm going to just take a polarized cord and make sure that the hot lead is going to here and the neutral is going here. Um, and then I'm going to try it back where I normally have this thing sitting. Um, and I did check, I have uh, I have this little tool, and I verified that in indeed everything is fine. Now, I wired this entire room. I built this room, I wired this whole room. I'm 100% certain that it's wired correctly, because I know how to do that. But, because I thought I was kind of losing my mind, I said, well, I'm going to check. 
And this outlet and the other outlet that I normally use read the same. These two yellow lights light up. That is correct. It's correct. It says correct right there. I'm not losing my mind. Although some things I wonder. So, um, so theoretically, if I hook this up with a polarized cord with these correct capacitors in here now, this should be just as quiet over there as it is over here. If it isn't, I'm going to have to find out why, because that makes zero sense. And the only other thing that I can possibly think of is that this surge protector is doing a better job at filtering out noise than the other one, but I would expect to hear noise, not hum. So that doesn't entirely add up either. And I do have a surge protector on that other outlet, but... Um, so anyway, so if somebody knows the answers to some of these rather puzzling questions that I'm trying to get answers to, I would be delighted to, to hear your comment. So here's what, but here's what it has come down to is it does matter which way that power cord is connected to this transformer. And I think it all revolves around this. That's my guess. That's my thought. Um, I, beyond that, I have no clue, because it doesn't make any sense to me. But this is the only thing. If, if these weren't here and I was plugging this directly into the transformer, if I had to guess, I would say that either it wouldn't make any difference, or I would just have a lot of hum no matter which way I hooked it up. Uh, I don't know. One of the things about amplifiers is you have to be super careful about noise coming into the system because they will amplify it very nicely for you. They amplify everything. They are not discriminatory. So, anyway, I wanted to correct my, my previous statement that it doesn't matter and that I didn't test because I had to because it wasn't working the way I wanted it to. It didn't make sense. Um, it just simply didn't add up. So... It seems that the only way I'm going to learn things is by making mistakes and having to fix them. There was a fair amount of work involved in wiring this in. And now I'm going to have to undo all that and get another cord and put that in here and do it correctly, I guess. But what is going to happen is I am going to, once I put that cord in here, I will test and make sure that this thing is quiet. Then when I move it over there, we'll test again and see if it's still quiet. At that point, I'm going to start pounding my head against something hard. Something wood, I guess. I don't know. <sighs> so, I'm hoping this is the last bulletin that you'll get from me uh, because I'm hoping that I've got this sorted and that it is indeed working. Um, and... The only other thing, like I said, I ran into before is not only was I getting hum, which you did here, but I was also hearing some, almost like a static. And um, still not sure what's going on with that. Um, I know if I really wanted to go crazy, and if if this were, if this were a consistent problem, no matter no matter where I put this, I can buy a. Uh, a better surge protector that will take care of RF noise and, and other things like and, and it will take care of the hum, it will take that care of noise if it's in the, the right frequency radio noise. So if I really really have to I can go that route. I'm hoping that that shouldn't be necessary. I don't think it should be. Um, but in any case that's the only thing left to me. If If the noise continues and it's still annoying enough that I don't want to use this which, by the way, I really, really, really like this little amp. It sounds, it sounds really good. Um, it's got a very mellow tone. It's got good bottom end. It doesn't beat my uh, 65 watt per channel stereo, but it's got a good solid bass. It's nice and mellow. It's got a good crisp high end. Um, it sounds really nice, and I really like it. So I really want to be able to use it. Um, Oh, and those for those of you who saw my previous video, my six BQ uh, five tubes, 
one of them I put a crack in the base of it. This has many hours of use on it since I did that. That tube is still going. So I'm guessing the crack went sideways and not inward. So I got I got lucky on that one. So um, so far so good. Um, I think I was smart to stop where I did. Uh, or I could have damaged the tube further. And I obviously didn't want to do that. I don't know what 6BQ5s go for. But I have a feeling they probably aren't cheap. So this was my news bulletin. And uh, we will proceed from here with your regularly scheduled programming. Well, it's been a while since I started uh, trying to figure out what was going on with this little amplifier. I don't know if it's better with this light on or off. Well, it keeps the shadows out. I hope that's okay. But it's definitely been challenging because I'm getting into an area that um, I'm just uh, not familiar with some things that I wish I was more familiar with. Um, and actually, I want to take this away from here. I don't want anything else interfering. There's a big fat transformer. It should have been quiet, but who knows? It's sitting on my power strip there, and I want—I don't want anything like that attached. Because who knows? It will affect things or not? I just don't want it to. All right. So, in the earlier part of this video, if I remember correctly, I'm trying to remember where I did this. Well, this amplifier is for a little. Magnavox amplifier wound up with a uh, polarized plug because I discovered that it does matter which way you plug that plug in. Uh, so I've been trying to let me back up a minute. I was fairly confident that this amplifier was working properly, and I was fairly confident that the uh, the humming that I was having in the system wasn't a fault in this amplifier. Now, as I discovered, there was something I could do to minimize the amount of hum that this thing would produce. But once I did that, and I moved, and, and I'm, this is all set up, uh, I'm set up in the area where this amp and the turntable are going to be used. Uh, this is a modern turntable. I'll get that in a minute. Up here is the turntable that I'll be using with this, I hope. But I didn't like, I really didn't like the humming that I was getting at first, and then the buzzing sounds that I was getting. Okay, let me put this there. So here's what I've done. I've got a jumper wire here, because this is the part, part that would normally plug into this, which would allow the switch in my, that turntable to control the amp. So what I've done is, i pulled this out of this, I've jumpered this, so this will turn on when I plug it in. This is going to be independent power. This is my power cord, my safe wiring here. And um, that, feeds, that feeds the turntable. So the amp has its own power, the turntable has its own power. You'll see in a minute why that matters. So actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire this up and I'm going to give that a little while to warm up. And I'll know that it's warming up. I can hear. Yeah. Let's see if the tube's warming up. There, sounds good. All right, now, what I've done is, oh, ouch, all right, I have one of my small speakers sitting over here by the camera, and you really can't hear, there's a teeny tiny bit of buzzing coming from the speaker up there. I'm not hearing it out of this little one down here. Am I? No, I don't hear it. I don't know why. But it's not too bad. Now, this, 
let's just see what happens when I plug this in. I'm not going to turn this on, I'm just going to plug this in. And why are you not... Are you not working? Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, here's my mic. I don't know if you can hear. It's buzzing a little bit. Let's flip it around. Yeah, that's also buzzing. It's not as bad as I thought. Um, okay. That's buzzing. Let's flip it around. Okay, that's worse. I can hear it up there louder than I can here. Yeah. Well, I can hear it there too. Um, and right now, this is this is at max volume. You see, yeah, this is at max volume right now. So it's interesting. So now, what I want to do, I'll put that about half. That's more. So now, so I'm gonna make sure this doesn't try to eject on me. Okay, it's still there. Let's do this. That's bad. That buzzing, which I hope you can hear. This again. Um, uh, if I if it's not obvious, I will try to boost that in editing. Um, that buzzing is pretty good. And it's annoying, especially if you have quiet passages of music, uh, or, or, or you're one you listen at low volumes, which sometimes I, I do. I just want some background. Um, so, that didn't seem to make much difference to that. But it's significant. And if I do this, it goes away. <laughs> I mean, the buzzing is just about all gone. Yep. So, now, let me explain to you why this is here. Uh, this is a modern turntable. And because this cartridge has relatively low output, I needed one of these. And... So what I did was, I hooked this from that preamp into this. And if I do not have that plugged in, if I have that power line disconnected or turned off like I just did, um, this thing's absolutely quiet. This, amp, this little amp sounds great. Um, I actually prefer running the turntable, this turntable up here, through this without, and instead of this. The uh, preamp puts out a little bit too much power for this, so you have to, to keep your volumes down. It also changes the, the EQ a little bit, the color changes a little bit. Um, and I do have a tube version of this, but that one would probably be even worse. Um, so, but anyway, so I was able to use this to just determine that yes, I can get a clean sound out of a turntable, and this and this amp sounds really good and clean if I'm using this and that. So my problem now is, well, how do I get a clean sound out of this turntable up here? my other turntable. And and the thing is, just plugging the thing in would cause me problems. So, oops. So ju just plugging this in, as you maybe heard, hopefully you did, um, causes humming. 
I spent a fair amount of time testing and trying, and I've made some mistakes. For instance, I think I've said before, you let this rest against your output audio transformer, and uh, that's a bad thing to do because it picks up all the noise in the line. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this. I did turn it off, but I just, wow, that's really in there. This is all very sketchy. And, yeah, I, I turned the switch off, but let me just let you in on a little secret. It's easy to forget that you haven't turned this off. I can tell at a glance that I've actually unplugged it, which is why I did that. Now, I'm going to, so this, so, so this is an EM, uh, an RFI EM filter, uh, I believe that's what they call it. Okay. What are they, okay, NP line load, all right. So, now theoretically, oh, that's interesting. It's saying DC, but it should be AC as well. Huh. Well, either this is going to work or it's going to go up in smoke. I was pretty sure the description said this was ACDC. Interesting. Well, uh, and I carried over. Yes. Oops. I hate when I do stuff like that. I hate when I hit my camera. Well, let's see. All right, we're going to rearrange this so that when I pick up the power cord, it doesn't lift. It doesn't lift my connection. This is my goal. Alright, let's throw that in there. That's interesting. Hmm. That's very strange. This isn't doing what I wanted it to do. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> it's always interesting when you're dealing with stuff, and uh, well, it, it gets interesting. Anyway, I'm turning that off for a minute because I want to uh, show you something. And I want to do this. So that's right side up. Now, now this does show. Um, on here it says it talks about DC. Now, when I investigated this, um, it gave the ratings in AC volts. And um, so I was a little bit baffled, but I, I was pretty confident I checked this out. So um, so I decided to hook it up anyway, uh, based on the uh, internal wiring. It shouldn't be a problem. Now, here's where things get interesting. This, this green cord right here is connected directly to the chassis of this turntable up here. And, um, to, and it's to, I think I have, there's a 
there's a ground wire inside this that's connected to the chassis, and I may have shown that in a previous portion of this video. Now, here's what's interesting. Um, when I turn this on, I hear the buzz. However, when I ground that chassis to this, it's quiet. I mean, it's dead quiet. There's no noise, no sound uh, uh, that I don't want. Now, let me just uh, I can turn the volume down a little bit. Of Cape St. Mary, where the hog down sail. Well, that's copyrighted. I know that is. Um, oh, the other weird thing is, for some reason, I don't think you can see, but my turntable is rotating even though the switch is to off. Uh, not sure why that is. If I don't hook up through this, I'm going to have to figure out why that's happening. But, um, in fact, let's try that. Um, let's. Uh, we're going to take. We're going to live on the edge here. I did turn that outlet off. I did not unplug my cord. I'm playing dangerously here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Okay. I don't know why that's not by fault in the on off switch. Oh, there it goes. Now it's turning off. <sighs> Old equipment can be a challenge. All right, so let's turn it back off and hook this back up. Um, yeah. Okay. That's the load, yep. Uh, also on this thing, it shows you the load side and the line side. So make sure. Uh, make sure that you hook it up properly. Do it for a reason. Okay. Okay. So apparently the on-off switch in my turntable has decided to misbehave. Now I did take this apart and clean it, but maybe I need to check and make sure that the uh, contacts aren't too close to each other when it's in its normal play position. This is the challenge when you're dealing with vintage equipment. Now, with this hooked up properly with a ground to that chassis, the noise is absolutely gone. This is absolutely quiet. This is actually quieter right now then if I um, I think I was getting more of a buzz if I turn off that this out this uh, outlet oh I guess you can't see it because I'm pointing to something you've all right all right so this is the the outlet I'm using for the turntable and I gave myself separate outlets so I have flexibility right now it makes no difference once with this hooked in place it doesn't make any difference Without this, there's a, there's, um, there's a, definitely a lot more noise um, when I turn this on. But when I, even with this turned off, I still get a little bit of noise out of this amp. Not much, but just a little tiny bit. Um, I mean, it's not objectionable, but there is a little tiny bit of noise coming out of this amp. Um, even with that power cord unplugged. But with this noise reduction, this EMI filter, this EMI RFI, I believe, um, it kills everything. It absolutely shuts down all the noise. Um, this is, I, I, I had no idea whether or not this would work. Now that I know it's going to work, this will be mounted inside this turntable. And then I will finally, finally, have gotten to the point where this little amplifier will be the one I use for this turntable. Um, I wanted it to be because I like how it works. It works very well with this cartridge. But I can't hear. 
is if I put my ear up to that speaker, I can hear a teeny tiny bit of buzz. That's it. I have another speaker up here on the wall, and that one was giving me um, more buzzing than this little speaker that I just had to my ear. And um, um, and if I and here's what's very well, it's just it's just the way it is. High frequencies are directional, very directional. Tweeters, of course, because they are producing high frequencies, are very directional. So if I was standing right where I am, I'm right in front of that speaker, and I'm right in the perfect spot to hear that tweeter. I'm right in the focal point of that tweeter and hear the noise coming out of that speaker. So when I was standing here, I was actually hearing more noise from that speaker on the wall than I was from this little one I have down here, closer to me. Um, although this one doesn't seem to be throwing as much or producing or you know, reproducing that static sound or noise as much as the big speakers were. I'm not sure why. But um, that, this is a good result. Um, the static from that big speaker was very obvious when I plugged this in with direct, just directly connected. It was also still obvious when I unplugged that plug from that outlet. It's, it was a whole lot less. And, the, you know, like I said, I, I hooked up the preamp from this turntable and it sounded good. It was very listenable. I, I didn't have any objections. But, um, but with the turntable connected to this, or the, the old turntable connected to this, um, even with the plug out, it just, there was, seemed to be noise there. I don't know exactly why that would be, because there's no power, other than what's coming through the RCA cable. I highly doubt that would be enough, but regardless, with this filter, zip, zero nada, nothing. So, I think this is a fix. I will be doing this uh, for those. So, I went through a whole long process. I don't want to think about how much time I spent trying to figure this all out. Um, I haven't. I am. I haven't tested feeding this through this using the, this connector yet, but I will do that. In fact, I will do that and get back to you and see if that really is the fix. I have to get inside. I have to do some rewiring. And um, then we'll get back to you. All right. Okay, I'm back. So as you can see, I've mounted my little box under here. With the two wires coming from the turntable going there, and the two wires going out to the amplifier. Well, three. Then I got my ground soldered on there. This wire goes to the ground on the chassis here, and. Uh, Oh yeah, that fixed all of my problems. Uh, give that a minute to warm up, and then we will. Uh, and I'll play. Well, right now, let's make sure. Let's see if we got sound. Yes. Okay. So it's warmed up. That's at full volume. I hear nothing. Absolutely nothing. Totally clean. I can hear. I can hear the sound of the, the drive mechanism in this thing through the tone arm. It's at max volume. That's the only sound I hear. There's no static, no hum, no noise, nothing. So let me just. Uh, that on for very long. Let me go to a quieter track. Um, this is full volume. Now in the track, all you're going to hear is the track noise. No stuff, no buzzing, no nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now you wouldn't think, I've got the volume way up.
Now, usually, before listening to something like this at that volume, I would hear the buzzing in the background. And uh, it was just annoying because this is a really nice sounding app, as you heard from that first cut, uh, which I couldn't play for very long. Um, So, I went through a lot of different things to try to find out what was wrong. I questioned my amp. Amp, yeah, there we are. Questioned my amp, the way it was wired. And there were some, there's, there were some positives to this. Um, I found a broken wire in this that I had to fix. Uh, broken wire on uh, the on this, which I had to fix. So there were some issues, um, but once I got those resolved, and I was pretty confident that um, everything else about this amp was right, because I was. There were times when I, I would have this on, just on and it would just be dead quiet. And so I was pretty confident that this amp wasn't my issue. I still wanted to check. And of course, it did depend on which way the power cord was, was um, plugged in, how quiet this was. So there were probably times when it wasn't quiet and other times when it was. And there's no longer a problem with that polarized plug. Something I wasn't going to do because this was a transformer amp. Um, but, in any case, it works better. So, and now, with the EMI filter in this, I can now start using this the way I wanted to. Uh, so, I'm going to wrap this up here. The EMI filter solved the issue. Now, I don't know why this particular motor, or if maybe all of these little... It, it, um, AC motors in these have a tendency to be noisy. I just don't know. But in in this case, it was a buzzing noise that I really couldn't. I just didn't like. It just was not. Um, it, it really detracted from me listening to this. Now I put this at any volume I want. Any volume very quiet, max, whatever, in between. Uh, and the reason I mention that is that this has um, a couple of taps on the volume controls. And when you go from, from here to about there, you hit one tap, or somewhere on there, and you get here and you hit another tap. And you would hear a difference in the noise a little bit from that. But I don't hear that anymore. It's gone. So I hope this helps somebody else because I spent a, a whole bunch of time trying to figure out what was going on, why there was, why I was getting hum, and I really did. I I, I take that back. I did suspect this because I was getting hum out of this, and. Um, if I plugged it in, if I hooked it up to a, a more modern amp, it hummed pretty pretty badly. Which is when that that was when I started looking for grounding issues in the tone arm and in the chassis and different places. And uh, turns out there was something else going on, which I've never ever seen or heard. I, I don't remember running into this before. Given my memory these days, well. It could have happened before, and I just don't recall. But no matter, it's fixed. It's absolutely dead silent. So for those of you who have something like this, you want it to sound good, and you get a little buzzing, humming noise in the background, this might be something to explore, uh, putting one of those on there. Uh, I'm going to wrap up. Well, no, I'm not going to. Some people might like Farside. Some people won't. 
I'm going to show you this. Um, this was sitting on my on my uh, desk here, and uh, I thought it was funny. For those of you who don't like Fireside, look away. Um, ever. So, I am. I'm going to wrap this up here. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope it will be helpful to somebody. I was trying to track down a hum that just will not go away, which is basically what I thought I was dealing with. A hum that wouldn't stop, and now it's gone. So, thanks for watching. If you watched this far, and hope to see you in the next video.